Well, we're excited to game week's finally here and certainly have great respect for University of Cincinnati. They're a really good football team, really good team, well coached and and uh, play well in all aspects, offense, defense, just got a good special team. So um, certainly glad it's at home and uh, I'll be ready to answer any questions you might have. This morning, or walked into the building, just a different vibe with it being game week finally. Yeah, really was. Kind of started a little bit Friday night in the, kind of the mock game. You know, you kind of feel, you know, there's some things in life that are, that are in, inevitable, and one of them is is Saturday that Cincinnati's going to be here, and we're going to be here, and there's going to be a whole bunch of people. And when it gets to that point, you know, and it gets closer, it's. Uh, it's a little surreal, you know, like, okay, here, here, here it comes, you know, cause you have, after the season, you have six, seven, eight months, you know, uh, and then starting that, that week it, uh, you know, it's getting ready to happen. So it's exciting. That mock game, obviously you got a new, a lot of new players going through stuff for the first time. Any interesting or <laughs> funny stories to share? That no, well, game? no, uh, um, you know, we didn't do, you guys weren't at the scrimmages, but, you know, we had three deep and a lot of mistakes of getting guys out there. And and uh, we didn't have any of those uh, because we only went one deep, you know, uh, with some substitutions that we made. But, uh, no, it went pretty smooth. Uh, you know, we also have new coaches too, you know, so we had to kind of get them. The only thing they really haven't done at this at this point, uh, new coaches, haven't been in the staff meeting on Saturday mornings, you know, before the game, kind of how we're going to play the players, what what are, uh, are we going to take the ball, defer, you know, what's the win like, all those type things that we go over. But um, I think it was a little soothing for them too. It was me, my pants fit, so that was that was a good thing. Settled that cornerback battle at least for week one and for now, but what set Ladarius apart and got him that second spot? I'm sorry, uh, the what battle? The cornerbacks. The cornerbacks have we? And what set you know Ladarius apart and got him that spot? Well, I don't, I don't know that we're set there. You know, to be perfectly honest with you, um, Clark, we've, you know, we feel like he's played the most consistent of that group, and then I think we're still, we're trying to find out exactly what we're going to do, whether it be Day Day or whether it be McLaughlin or whether it be Chavis. To be perfectly honest with you, we're, we're still trying to figure that out. Uh, um, we obviously know they're all going to play and things of that nature, but we're 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 still trying to figure out who's going to run out there with the ones. And then obviously Brady Latham and Jaden Hazelwood are on the depth chart. Just injury update on them: Are they going to be back in practice today, tomorrow? Yeah, we expect both of those uh, guys to be back in practice. Some, maybe as soon as this afternoon, but uh, um, uh, certainly uh, we feel like they'll be ready for Saturday. This game uh, will be the first for Arkansas since 1980 where you're ranked and the opponent is ranked for a season opener. Uh, do you kind of feel like there could be more, a little, little more national attention and, you know, what it might mean to you if you're able to win the game? And well, I think it's a big deal that SEC Nation's here. You know, that's, uh, you know, one of three top 25 matchups. Um, we're on ESPN. Um, uh, yeah, I mean – uh, you want that for the program, you know, uh, publicity for the program. And and obviously uh, we want to be standing room only and those things, which I think we are. And uh, <clears throat> But it's changed a little bit over the last couple of years, you know. Of course, who knows what it would have been during the COVID year. You know, I think we would have had some really good crowds. We were playing okay. You know, we were playing a little bit better than what we might have in the past. and. But now the expectations are certainly high, and they're high in our building as well. Uh, but I think opening up against a top 25 program, which I think Cincinnati's higher than that even, I think they they would do well in the SEC. I, I know that. Um, uh, it should have helped us in the summer, should have helped us in fall camp, understanding that, you know, we're not playing a team that's, in way inferior to us we're playing a team that's every bit as good as we are you know um so i think that's helped us i hope it has a few weeks ago the talk was that if, if things go right uh that um rocket would get a certain percentage of the tailback snaps 
with Dominique coming on, you know, you know, would that change as early as week two or three or how's Dominique and what do you think about the running back scenario now? Well, you know, we have the three right now with Dominique getting some indie reps. We're going to try to add to his reps uh, today. Um, uh, I think we need to do some cutting with him where he, we're not telling him, you know, where in other words, go to that cone and take a right, go to this cone and take a left. I think we've got to do some things where, uh, he's catching a ball out of the backfield. Not, I don't want him in, involved in possibilities of guys on the ground inside and things of that nature. Not the first day. We'll we'll try to progress that. But somewhere he can catch the ball and have to make a move off of a defender uh, where we're not telling him which way to go uh, pre-snap or pre-rep, whatever that may be, and and see how he does there. But uh, I don't I don't know if he'll be ready this week. Um, but I sure would hope that he'd be ready by South Carolina. I don't know that. We'll know a little bit more after we see him in practice. And you were you were talking a minute ago about playing a top 25 team and, and just how that helps. You know, last year you had Rice and then you had your top 25 team. If, if you look at the you know, contrasting getting ready for those two seasons, was it difficult preparing last year when so many people were talking about the game two versus – well, I think it could have been, but, you know, we were coming off a three and seven season. We just trying to get any win we could get, you know, and actually you guys know we had to stop Bryce on the fourth down or we were in major trouble in the third quarter last year against them. So it wasn't exactly like we really were hitting on all cylinders, you know, in that game. Uh, so to answer your question, I, I, I don't really know. We tried to, we tried to downplay the noise of Texas as much as we could last year and know that we had to beat Rice and and obviously didn't do a very good job of that in the first half, especially. Um, this year we know, you know, nobody said a word about South Carolina. You know, we, we know we've got a really, really good – they're a really good team. I mean, they really are. Um, only team to beat Notre Dame last year and – you know, I know people say that they've lost some players. Well, they, they played a whole bunch of them last year because they were so far ahead in a lot of their games that they got experience with their other guys. And then they brought in some nice transfers as well. And special teams, too deep. You've got an either-or at kickoff, punter, and long snapper. Mm -hmm. uh, can you fill us in on just what's going on at those three yeah, spots? Yeah, I think it's either one guy or the other one, I think. <laughs> what it says right here, it say either this guy or that other guy. That's kind of where we're at. On punter, is there a chance you could use both of them? Yeah. You know, I trust Bauer. You know, Fletcher can boom that stuff. I mean, he, he can he, he, he can kick it forever, uh, punt it forever. But, you know, Bauer, I trust him. You know, he's been been good at that. So, I mean, he's been good at getting the uh, ball out of there. Um, Cincinnati is. They're going to try to block punts all, the whole game. I mean. Uh, our past has not shown that we were very good early in the year, both years. Uh, we've had a punt blocked early. We're very uh, aware of that. Uh, but uh, we got to get the ball out of there as well as protect it. So I don't, I don't know what we're going to do per, per se right there yet. Sam, re reading up on Cincinnati, sounds like Luke Fickle's not going to name a starter. Yeah. And, you know, Warm-ups, obviously he knows who he's going to start, but yeah. how does that impact your all's preparation? And um, Obviously, you've got a, an experienced guy and a young guy. That's maybe... You know, so much about first games, you really don't know who's good and who's not. I mean, you don't. You, and, and it's the same – I'm talking about team-wise. And then you talk about the quarterback, you know, and they – we know the two guys they have, you know, so we had to – be prepared for possibly what they might do different, but they had a running quarterback, a throwing quarterback and one guy last year, you know what I mean? So you can kind of see what they would do with a runner because they ran him a lot and they, you kind of see their route trees and all these things that they, they lost a really good receiver in 12. He's a really good receiver. The quarterback, the running back was really good. Those are three guys on offense they lost that were really good players, but, and their coordinator, you know, I think he went to LSU maybe, but the quarter court, quarterback coach is taking it over and I think they'll be very similar uh and I think they'll run more of if this makes sense they'll run more of what they've already ran if it's a running quarterback they'll run more runs with him and if it's not they'll probably throw the ball a little bit more and go back to their base inside outside zone 
uh, type schemes that they've they've ran for years. A quick, quick question from Nate. I want wonder if I could ask you. Um, you know, Luke Fickle. How well do you know him? What do you think of the job he's done there? And, you know, he's a guy who's the last couple of years his name would come up yeah. like when a Big Ten job opened up or Big Twelve, and he's obviously stayed there. And now he's taking him into the Big Twelve. Just what what do you think about all that and the fact he stayed there? You know, I didn't know him. Uh, I obviously knew who he was. I met him at the uh, AFCA uh, banquet where they were giving out the coach of the year. And and uh, I, for whatever reason, <laughs> I was one of the five guys, you know, and then he he won it. So we were sitting backstage talking about it, you know, and uh, about not that, but just visiting. He got some kids, his kids wrestle. I remember him talking to me about that. And he was a wrestler, you know, and uh, – but he's just a really nice fella, a nice guy. And uh, but I don't know him. I don't know. I know guys who have worked with him and and things of that nature. But he sure has a great reputation as a coach and as a man. I I do know that. And he seemed like a really nice guy. What, what do you think about the job? Building them up in the well, it's unbelievable. You know, I coached at Cincinnati in '96, in 1996, and and. Uh, uh, that's a blue collar type town. I mean, Cincinnati, it's a tough, you know, and he's got that team playing like that. They're a little scary because they, they have a chip on their shoulder. They're the underdog type team and man, they play hard and those things. And he's, I mean, to go into Notre Dame and beat them last year, only regular season loss. And I don't know what Notre Dame did in the bowl game, but, um, uh, to finish, they finished fifth in the last Notre Dame did, and they finished fifth because Cincinnati went in there and beat them, and that's hard to do for any team. Um, so he's got them playing with great confidence, and you can tell just his demeanor, the way he leads the team. They would they would have a lot of confidence to him. So um, nobody, I don't believe before. Well, nobody in college football has done what they did, so he's doing a great job and. He must really like it there because I'm sure he's had other opportunities to to leave, uh, but he didn't, hadn't. So must really like it there. You said the first games, you a lot of times don't really know who's good yet. So outside of depth chart questions, just what are you hoping to learn about your team in this first week? Well, I want to be able to do some of the things that we did last year a little bit better. In other words, I want to be able to run the football. I want to be able to win first down on defense. You know, we've got to convert third and one in short yardages. I mean, that's things we had to get better. But as a overall team, I want to see what we have out at wide out. Um, I want to see how much we miss Dominique Johnson. Um, there's some – I want to see how good Drew Sanders is. I mean, there's a lot of things in there that – um, is our D line better than it was a year ago with, you know, with losing Ridgeway and Trey Williams and, you know, I mean, can we be better than we were? Uh, if we go multiple fronts, can we, can we do that? You know, are we better with four guys on the line of scrimmage and, and taking a safety off the field or are we better in a three down front? I don't know the answer right now. We've looked good doing whatever we've been doing in practice, but, you know, and then how are we, how are we going to hang on to the ball? It's a big deal. We did, we, we were good last year hanging on to the football, but we have to, if you look at Cincinnati, when they break games, it's because they get turnovers and it's on special teams. It's on everything. So for us, we should, be okay because we've got all our coordinators back. We should be okay. We should be able to go out there in the first game and function and and do well. Until we do it, you just it's it's kind of scary. You know, you, you don't know you know until you do it. Sam, you just mentioned Drew Sanders. Um, what are you most excited to see out of him? I guess this weekend, and do you kind of get a sense that he's ready to go prove himself at this level? He's ready. I mean, he's, he just never has played inside the box much, you know, in college, he's been an edge guy. And, uh, and so uh, obviously he's taking a lot of reps inside. We feel like he's ready. I'm sure he is ready. I look for him to have a really good game. Uh, 
but it's a different position. Any anybody who's ever played linebacker, it's a much different if you're where they can block you from either direction. And when you're out on the edge and you, you know, everything's funneling from inside out to you, a lot of difference. And, uh, and those are things that he hadn't done in at least a year. And, and I think he's, I think he's certainly um, ready for that. I see several freshmen in the two deep on your offensive line. I guess just what do you think that says about the, the potential of that group, maybe the future? I like position? those guys, you know, uh, with Chambly and Harris and, and Kudis. Uh, I like those three guys. I think they're really, you know, Henderson's a little behind them, those guys right now. But I like those three. I think they're the future of our program. Um, you know, obviously – Devin Manuel's been beat up, so that kind of and, – and uh, Marcus Henderson, so that kind of elevates, you know, those guys a little bit. But um, I've really been impressed with those three guys, and and uh, I think we'll get Devin back a little bit today, some, along with Brady. So that'll help us, you know, with that depth as well. I think Cincinnati returned all five of the starting offensive line. Uh, what, what is your impression of that group having your offensive line background? Well, anytime you have them all coming back, you know, that's a, that's a good thing. Um, uh, even if it's a good thing. And, um, you know, they run the duo play about as good as anybody. Uh, they'll, they'll try to bloody your nose and come right at you. They're really good in pass protection. Um, I don't, I don't know what happened to their coach, you know, coach Ron Crook, good football coach, but he's since moved on and, and, uh, uh, had a lot of respect for him and, you know, do have a lot of respect for him, but they're, 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 they're well coached. I'm sure they'll come in here well coached and they play really well together. And, you know, you have five, like we do, we have four coming back. We feel like that's a strength of our team. I can't speak for coach, but I'm assuming he thinks that's a strength of their team. I, I do. And uh, um, uh, really been impressed with their physicality. With uh, KJ, one of my favorite lines you said last year was uh, when he bowed over a safety, you said, this is all to show him this is all day. <laughs> What's the balance, though, with that? Um, because you're authentic quarterback, but um, what's the balance with that? With because it's a big momentum deal when he does something like that. It, it excites everybody, but also stepping out of bounds because he did have to come out of a few games last year. Well, you can't. It's hard to coach that out of a kid. I mean, it really is because he, you know, in practice he can veer around and do all this stuff, but you can tell him, you know we got to have you healthy, you know, and this, that, and other, and he, he going to do whatever he wants to do, to be honest with you. And, and, uh, I think it just depends on the moment in the game. If he thinks that he needs to set the tone then he's going to go do it, you know, whether, whatever we tell him, uh, to be honest with you. And, and, uh, but he's a big guy, you know, he can handle some, he can handle physical tackles and things of that nature, but we're going to run him and we're not going to change our offense, you know, from what we did before. I would like him to, you know, get on the ground a little bit more, get out of bounds some, but all oh, he says all the right things, but then it's Saturday time he goes right over somebody, you know, so I'm not going to coach him out of being aggressive, but I am going to ask him to take care of himself. Um. Last year, you guys cleaned up penalties in the second game. You only had four against Texas. You had 13 for 117 in the opener. That's awesome. Thank you. For <laughs> I'm just speaking it out there. Yeah, so a little question behind this, or you're just trying to murder me right now. <laughs> I'm just uh, – I'm asking if you pointed that out to the, the players, how you guys started things off last year. Because obviously you can't have – um, Not yet. I mean, against. we have in, in our scrimmages certainly. Um, you know, I was teasing you, by the way. Um, I know this, we, if we did that again, we'd lose. And uh, so I think we've been a little cleaner. We've been really clean with the ball. You know, I haven't thrown a lot of picks uh, offensively, I'm saying. I hadn't had the ball on the ground much. Uh, but, and I, I told them after the first scrimmage, I said, you know, we're going to have a holding call. I mean, we are. That's probably going to get two, to be honest with you. That's kind of how it is. And, 
and you're going to have, you know, you're going to have a pass interference call that's going to happen. But the ones where you jump off sides, you know, and the, on defense and the ones where you legal procedure, you don't line up right. Those are things that, you know, I coached high school ball. Those are things in high school that you don't see. You don't see Fayetteville High out here doing that, you know, and you might not see Fayetteville Middle School out here doing that. And then we go out there and do it. And I get it as anxiety and all those type things, but that's also coaching. And uh, I believe I probably said that last year after, after the rice game, you know, we got to, that's on me, but I think we'll be much better. You know, we do have a lot of guys coming back. So I think that'll help them too, a little bit with a little bit of nervousness, a little bit of anxiety as well. Talking about cleaning things up. I'm curious this week in practice, the next few days, what are some things that you'd like to see out of your team? Just a uh, execution on offense. Just, uh, we had a really good practice Saturday morning. I mean, really good, uh, you know, not a lot of, snaps errant you know we don't have those with the guys that are really going to play that position right now we do have some with you know guys that aren't or you know right now we're with Kuda's playing he's probably not a center but he's playing center for us uh, so we've cleaned up uh, those things defensively um, basically it's just running the game plan because we've had two days already to practice for Cincinnati and now it's just clean up from the coaches about what we need to throw out some things that didn't look good on on Friday and or excuse me on Thursday and Saturday and just building confidence in our team you know and you do that by practicing well and uh, so if we can do that I think we'll be fine it's just I, we can't afford to have any sloppiness at practice. It's got to be bam, 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 bam. We already had a two-day run through, basically a two-day practice on Cincinnati. Now it's got to be, this is exactly what we're going to do, and let's let's go build confidence. The only way you can do that is do things well, you know. And then the second half of last season, you didn't have Jalen Cattle on. It seems like he's really become a vocal leader on that defense. How excited are you to see him get back on the field? Very, you know, I'm excited for him, you know, too. I'm excited for the team, but that's hard on the guys who played a lot of ball and he's sitting out there. And we're having one of our better – well, our best years since he's been here, you know, and he, he wasn't a on-the-field participant in seven of the games, you know. I'm sure that's that's very, very hard for him. So, uh, I think he – you know, anytime you lose something, you know, it, it even becomes more special when you when you get it back. Uh, or you have a chance to earn it back or whatever it may be the case. But I think he's really excited to play. He's played extremely well. And, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You, you were talking about your block punt problems early in the year, the last couple of years. And it, not just Arkansas, but it seems like a, there's a lot of big special teams plays early in the season, um, whether it be, I guess, breakdowns most of the time and what do you think that is that, that there's so many big plays early in the year on special well I think I think you don't really know exactly what they're going to do you know if you get into week three and four and five now you've got an idea of what they're going to do from um you just have to be so just base sound in special teams now last year we had a punt blocked against I think it was right the first game of the year because we just we just didn't block out I mean that we did every day in practice, you know, just something happened, you know, same guy, all that, you know what I mean? Um, but I think a lot of that is, 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 uh, uh, you can really tell, um, a lot of the new stuff that comes in, you know, because it's like pass protection. If you, you're sound with rules and schematics, you should have, you should be okay. Uh, you know, Georgia blocked one last year on us that, uh, we hadn't we hadn't seen, but not only that, but we just weren't. That was not necessarily sound against that uh, look, and uh, we certainly made an adjustment. But you know, we'd like to make the adjustments before it happens. You know, where we can be able to pick that up. And so, as we've been together a little bit longer, I think uh, our big talk between Scott and I and, and the special teams is. We just have to have a way, a mechanism to make sure that whatever they throw at us that we, you know, if we're going to cut a guy loose, he's got to be coming from 10 buck two out there, you know. And uh, 
not up the middle. And of course, that's that's easy to, I mean, that's everybody knows that, but sometimes it's difficult to get done. And I think we're a lot sounder than what we were in my first two years here. And, but I'll say this after the first, you know, after the first three or four games, Georgia got us, but after that, we seem to be pretty sound in that aspect. You've answered this already, but who, who are some of the guys on the defensive side of the ball for Cincinnati that you guys have kind of identified as, as impact players? Or you know, you know they lost a game? lot. They lost a lot of of, of of players from last year. Really good players too. But I like they're both their linebackers two and thirteen, and then they got a defensive end Van, forty two. That's a that's a good player. Played a lot of ball for them uh, last year, and then in the secondary Bush and Hicks, their free safety and their boundary corner. Those those guys are, and that's who we know really know about the rest of the guys. They lost uh, several defensive starter and guys that went to the NFL last year, but but Van played a lot of ball for them, and uh, and I really like thirteen. He's the Sam now, but makes a lot of plays, makes them in open space, big guy. Um, and of course they still have Bush and, and Hicks in the secondary, but they'll run and hit you now. They're a good team. I mean, good football team. I was wondering if you watched any week zero games and if there's anything yeah. that popped up that made you go, hmm, I want to revisit that with the team or we need to, need to double down on that, anything well, like that? Well, I watched Wyoming and Illinois and there wasn't really anything much came out of that, you know. Illinois beat them pretty good, and and then the Nebraska game. I oh mean, yeah, there's some things came out of there that you go, maybe we ought to learn a little bit out here, or there, you know. But um, not not really anything that I can think of. It's a good game though, Nebraska Northwestern. That's a really good game. Sam, so from an offensive line, I mean, obviously experience is good anywhere, but how much does having the experience you guys have on the line, the experience they have, the cohesiveness, all that, yeah. how, how much does that help? Well, I think it's huge. In the first game, depends on what type of defense you're playing. I mean, if you're playing a Cincinnati that's all over the place, you know, that, you know, run at 3-3-5 and they're, I mean, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna come in gaps now. I mean, and twist and blitz and all kinds of stuff. I think it really helps you when you have an older line because, you know, you just got to really be gap sounding. You have to against anybody, but a team that moves all the time and 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 blitzes quite a bit of the time, um, you really have to be ready. So I'm glad we're, we're older. They're going to get us some too. I mean, they, they've got good players and great scheme, uh, but I think it's a big deal for us to be a little older and the guys have seen a lot of ball uh, with especially with a defense that uh, Cincinnati runs. And on the other side, that very multiple guy. How how big a challenge is that for you all's defense? Well, it's a big okay. challenge because you know <clears throat> they lost their quarterback, they lost their tailback, and they lost a really good wideout. Well, they get, got a transfer in from Hawaii, who's really a good player, and they've got two separate quarterbacks that might who knows who's going to play. You know and not positive who the running back's going to be yet. Uh, so Barry's, but we do know, and they got a new coordinator. So you're, you know, you don't know exactly what they're going to do, but um, I think uh, we've got enough defense in that we can attack whatever we see. You know, I think the first couple of series are going to be really important to figure out kind of, you know, what they're bringing to the party, you know, some guys bring iced tea and some guys bring liquor and you just got to figure out what they're bringing. I mean, you, Hey, go, go into, go into two minute offense. And you'll figure out what kind of party you're going to on the first play. They start, Hey, come after you. <laughs> you're going home. Okay. This is what kind of party it's going to be, or they'll drop eight. And you got to dink and dunk and get down in there. So. The first two series on both sides of the ball will be a big, big thing on Saturday, in my opinion, and how fast our coaches make adjustments and how fast theirs does. I think it's a – can't wait till half. The game's halfway over at that point. So, we got to, we got to really get good communication up front or up top and uh, see what we need to see to figure all this stuff out.
One more line thing, you know, Luke, Luke, Luke Jones, obviously a new starter, but he's an experienced player. Um, how do you feel about him fitting in with that group? And um, he'll be great. Yeah. He'll be great. I'm not worried about him one bit. Uh, he'll 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 do a really nice job. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.